Holy Heavenly Father, thank you very much for bringing me together with all the brothers and sisters. Amen. Bless us today. And let us learn what you want us to learn today and live it. Amen. 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 This week's lesson, we're talking about finding rest in family ties. I'm finding it fascinating. Um, okay, I, I, I got the lesson, but I'm way off in another world. Yeah, come on down there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that world, though. <laughs> you know how you study one thing and it makes you think of something else and so you get all involved in that? But then when you look back, you say, but I got here because I was tied to it. And now all of a sudden, this starts meaning something completely different because of what you learned over here. All right, somebody tell me who uh, Joseph's brothers were. Who is, who, who is the oldest one? Okay, Reuben. Who is the next? Simeon. Who is the next? I'll write his name out because it's short. Levi. It's an I. Uh, who is the next one? I don't know them either. Judah. Okay. Next. Well. <laughs> okay, now it's, it's really going to go crazy, but go ahead. It was Issachar. Okay. And then who? Zebulun. Zebulun. Okay. You can spell the mouth. Huh? There's a Dan in there somewhere. Dan means no. Okay. The, the confusion isn't just that you don't know their names. Because I said, what are they by age? Because um, um, he had the youngest sibling one first. Okay, down to here, whose children are these? How do you spell Leah? L-E-A-H, Leah. Okay, this is Leah's children right here. Okay? Now, when Joseph was sold into slavery, how old were these rascals? Hmm? Okay, Reuben was 24. Simeon was 23. Le Levi was 22. Judah, 21. Issachar was 19. And Zebulun was 18. Joseph was 17. How many are in this family? 12, 12, 13. You're missing how many? Husband and wife. Half of them. Now, as you know, um, there were some, what do they call them, handmaids involved here. Yes. Okay, so Leah has two by a handmaid, and I don't know which ones are which, but I'm just going to... The, the first four were hers. Uh -huh. And then it says that she ceased. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then something happens, and then she had another one, and then she had another one. So apparently she ended up with the six. But after the first four, there was this delay. So yeah, there's a two-year period here. So there was this little delay. Where's my child? So I go get somebody else to have it. Okay, so then we come along, and here is um, some of the others. Dan, which is from one of the others, uh, is over here. Dan, I'm going to put him here, is also 21 at that time. Naphtali was 20, so Naphtali was here. All right, he was 20. Gad was 19, Asher was 18, 
Joseph is 17 and Benjamin was 11. How many years from here to here? Seven. Seven years. Seven years. How many children? <laughs> Joseph was a busy man. Were they all his? Yes, they're all his. Different women. They're all brothers by different oh, mothers. Okay, okay. These His are father was Jacob. Okay. Yes. Jacob. Did I say Joseph? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think my rerun and, said Joseph. And, and yet Jacob was not looking to a prostitute too. <laughs> <laughs> and turned out to be his own stepdaughter. Stepdaughter, daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law. Okay, so, so here we are. This this story that we're studying this week about family ties and so on. And what happens in in Egypt when the brothers show up? Back it up now to when Joseph is seventeen. When Joseph is, let's say, sixteen, he's tending the sheep with his brothers. There's not that much difference. If he's 16, his oldest brother's only 23. They're not that far apart. Seven years. Now, that's quite a bit at that age, but not terribly. So he's going out with them, and then he has this dream. I don't think, from the Bible story, it doesn't sound like that endeared him to them very well. Just a little bit of family dysfunction there. Then he has a second dream. Now his dad reprimands him. Son, quit having dreams. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Stop having dreams. Does that work? <laughs> you can't stop having dreams. You can stop telling them, though. You can stop telling them, though. And maybe that's what Joseph was trying to get at. But Joseph, it says, I forget the exact wording, or not Joseph, Jacob, Kind of like Mary, the mother of Jesus, she pondered it. Why did my son have these two dreams? Apparently he dwelt on that a little bit. He kept that in the back of his mind. What does this mean? The brothers, they lived on it by acting out, getting angry, frustration, just real hatred. And then, apparently it was right after the dreams, daddy makes him a coat of many colors. That was a good move, Dad. That was a real good move. You want peace in your family? That was a real good move. Come on, Dad, one more time. Show favoritism. There was no peace anyway. No, there wasn't any peace. There's two wives. Well, there's two wives and two, two maids. So there's four women tied up in this family so far, and we're only down to here. But you know, Joseph... <coughs> in spite of all this. But if Jacob had spent as much time and energy on the others, they might have been different. You mean spending time with them, teaching them? Yeah. And I'm not saying he didn't. I think he took more interest in the children of his older age. Well, we know that because how did Leah respond? <coughs> That's why they got the handmaids. This is why Leah gave him the second hand, gave him her handmaid is because she was jealous. she'd stopped having children he's paying all attention to Rachel even though he has no children by Rachel from the first day at the well Rachel is the one he loved duh right. Leah would you expect when you pull this with your dad what did you expect really and so it goes on and it continues and this young man grows up in that He's watching it. When he's seven years old, he's 14. So he's seeing this stuff happen. There's not that much age difference. It's not like the older brothers were all grown up and were married and off on their own and he's like, what are you doing over there? Uh, I'll come visit you. No, they're in the same house. They're growing up together. They're taking care of the sheep together. They're, they're cutting the wool together. They're doing all of this stuff together. 
and then the dreams, and then the coat, and then the pit. So Joseph shows up. He's tired. I'm assuming he brought them food, because if they've been gone for a long time, Daddy probably sent him with a big old backpack of food for them. And so they, they see him coming. He's tired because he's had to go to the second place to find them, twice as far perhaps as he anticipated walking, and now he's way off over there. And finally he finds them. He doesn't have the animosity they do. It's not mutual. And he shows up and they treat him roughly. They take the stuff off him. They take his coat off of him and they throw him in a pit. At whose suggestion? The oldest. Whose? Which name? Uh, the, the oldest. Reuben. Is it Reuben? I thought it was Simeon. I thought it was Simeon. I'm not real clear, but Reuben wanted to save him. Simeon seems to be the ringleader. Reuben is the oldest, and he's got a little bit of sense in his head to take care of his little brothers. I think he wanted time to think it through, though. Very clearly did. Well, Ellen White even paints it more so than that. In addition to that, he was so angry, he was so frustrated, he was afraid it would come out. Mm -hmm. And they would do whatever in spite of it. So he wanted to get away from it and just let off some steam so that he wouldn't reveal his plan. That's the way Ellen White paints it that I that I pick up on. Well, he was going to come back to let him out. Yes, yes, but he's afraid if he stays there, that'll get out. <laughs> he's just got to get away from. Him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And obviously, God's in control. God, God didn't plan this, but God can use it. And so Reuben takes off. Simeon, somebody anyway, sees the traitors coming, and Simeon says, "Let's do it." He wanted to kill him. Yeah, we might as well have some money at least. Simeon wanted to get Simeon had a problem. He had a lot of animosity. So anyway, we know the story. They sell him. Now remember, Benjamin's only 11 years old. So Joseph is leaving a little brother behind. And I suppose, because they were full-blooded brothers, and their mother being loved so much, and, 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 Joseph was the protector of Benjamin. That's how I see it. Which one of these guys would have? None. So we've got a real divide in the family here, don't we? Because it's my mother against your mother. And even though we all have the same dad, you know, and two of these are Rachel's maids, but still, these are blood brothers. And then these four are blood brothers, and these are half, you know, and all of the rest. And so, it's a mess, isn't it? It really is a mess. So, think about what's going on now when we have this pit, and we're talking about throwing him in it and taking him out and selling him. We got a mess here. These guys all have animosity perhaps with each other. They have the same dad and that's about all they have in common. And the animosity from the mothers, the maids, daddy trying to get along with it, trying to please them and making bigger mistakes, more mistakes. And here's this ruckus. And there's no mom, there's no dad in sight. They live out what they want to do. And so here we go. We throw him in the pit, then we take him out, and we sell him into slavery. The Bible says that Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. Okay, so now, over here, we have 30. Here he was 17. How many years? 13. 13 years between being a slave and a prisoner. I don't know how much in each. I think it said it was 10 years in the house of Potiphar. Okay. Is that what it says? Okay, that could be. All right, so, so if, there were, if there were 10 years there, <clears throat> and this 30, by the way, he was 30 years old, and that's how many years did I say? Did we say 13? 
seven of those was during the famine. Not when he was 30. No, that was, the, that was before the famine started. Yes, 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 yes. That's when he saw his brothers. So when he saw his brothers, he was, help me, 30? Well, it had been going on for long enough for him to run out of food in Canaan. The he was, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I just looked at my notes. He was 39 when, when the famine hit, when the, when the brothers came. Because it was seven years and two years. Seven and two. All right, so <clears throat> here's what he was when he was sold into slavery. Here's what he was when his brothers come back. Let's jot down the ages of the others. No, I don't have it memorized. Okay, so up here, I'm going to write it closer so that we can follow it here. All right, so now, in fact, let's put it in another color so we can keep them straight. Reuben is now 46. 45. 44. Um, 43. 41, 40, uh, Dan was 43, um, Naphtali was 42, anyway, something's mixed up here, Gad was 41, Asher was 40, Benjamin? Asher I already have. Uh, Joseph down here is 39 and Benjamin is 33. Anyway, I don't have them all exactly right there because of the way I wrote them down. It's a little hard to follow. Look at the ages. <clears throat> He's 39. These guys show up in front of him. Not the little one. Not him. So there's how many? Ten. So there's ten brothers ranging from 40 to 46. He's 39. They're not that different in ages, especially in middle age. When you're 39 years old, 46 isn't far off. When you're 17, another seven years does seem greater. So he looks out at his brothers. He's staying there. He's got all of his Egyptian regalia on. They're not going to recognize anything with this. He was 17 the last time they saw him. But they were a little older. So they haven't changed as much between the ages of 24 and 46 as a 17 to a 39 would change. And then change all of his clothing. So there was no chance they were going to recognize him. That makes sense. But here's some things I want you to think about. I want you to think about the brothers. The story is mostly about Joseph and his forgiveness. When did he forgive them? My guess? Walking on the way to Egypt. That's my guess. Why do I say that? Why would you say that? Because he had a connection with the Lord. <coughs> and he had to do that to have peace. Absolutely. And that's why I say it. Stability. I agree with you. Stability. You can't grow and heal. You can't heal from the past and grow with anger. Right. And, and in a sense, unforgiveness would be anger. Yeah. I'm angry at what you did to me. Yeah. Or I'm angry at the effect on me and you caused it. The uh, Quarterly says he wept. He really wept hard. And he was... Beside himself. Have you ever done that? Wept so hard you just got to the point you couldn't anymore? I have. It's frustrating, folks. Because what it's saying is, is you have wept, you, you are so depressed, you are so hurt, you are so whatever it is. Could be somebody else's fault, it could be your own. 
your spirit has sunk to its lowest level. You don't know what to do. That's what he did. He had a solution. He found it in his Father's God, to use the Bible's words. Notice not his God, his Father's God. Why would the Bible say that? Many times with a king, King Saul is an example, speaking to the prophet, your God. Wasn't he Saul's God? Why would somebody refer to him that way? Maybe that's where he met his God was through his father. Which would be obvious, wouldn't it? Good point, yes. But at his age, 17, he had never really probably had that tested. Mm -hmm. It was still living under his father's rules, his father's authority, and so that was his father's God, which in, 50, in, in chapter 50, verse 20, tells us what he resolved by then. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another example that goes with this. Samuel. Right. When did Samuel really have a relationship with God? For sure. He, he did, since he was a boy. Yes. But when, when was it really solidified where now it's my God? When God, told when God spoke to him. Because mm -hmm. now God has responded to him. Because... Yes, because see, here's what's interesting. You keep reading in the Bible, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, God of Joseph. You know, why does it name these first individuals? They were anchors. Because God spoke directly to them. Mm -hmm. Did God speak to any of the patriarchs during the time in Egypt? 400 years. No. No. So as you look at the Bible and you look at their referencing of who's God, it's the God that spoke to them, to that person. So because God was speaking to Samuel, Saul would say, you're God. Could he have possibly spoken to Amram and Jochebed, though? Very possibly. Um, yeah. We just don't have a record of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so the point is, Really saying your God is a way of saying, I know God is speaking to you. I know who that is. And then we make him our God as well. Okay? So here's Joseph <clears throat> standing before these men. They have no clue who he is, and he knows exactly who they are. He can call them by name. They all have distinctive features. After all, they came from three different mothers. There's not, he's got a few things to sort out. And so he's standing there and he sees them. And he goes through this long thing, and your lesson brings this out. Why did he go through all of this regalia, blaming them, accusing them of being spies? Why did he do that? I want to see if they changed. Yep. Why did that matter? To see if they were genuine and how big it was. Okay. Why did it matter? It caught to affirm. From what? To put Joseph at rest that they had truly changed. It would make him feel good. Yeah. Well, he wanted to find out about his father and his brother. That too. Yeah. Because... <laughs> These, not her, his father, his brother, and maybe his mother. You know, he's got questions. He's not heard one word from that family all these years. Wouldn't you want to know something about your family? Whether you loved them or hated them, you'd still want to know. But especially the ones you love, your father, your little brother that Joseph was supposed to be taken care of? Perhaps. But there's something else. There's something else. Why did he want to know if they had changed? What was it to Joseph? When, when he was sitting there unexpected, not expecting them at all, mm -hmm. and they come in before him, and the first thing they do is hit the ground. 
in front of him. Ding, 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 ding. Come rolling back over him like water. All these emotions, these feelings, and he probably asked things he never even knew he would ask. All this, where's my little brother? Is my daddy still alive? But he didn't speak to him. He spoke to an interpreter. He looked different. But right then, I think that's when all these old feelings started coming up. And he probably had a little bit of hostility in his voice when he said, you know, when he talked to him. He wasn't gentle with him. But well, he wasn't gentle because he wanted to treat them roughly. He didn't want them he to suspect. To. He, well, he wanted to see what they were made That's out right. of. Right, right. Would it help if you had a dream and you knew the future? <laughs> Not now. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> now think about it. Look at the timing. Somewhere in the year before this, Joseph had two dreams. What happened in those dreams? Bowed Who bowed down to him? His brothers and his mother. Do you suppose the day that he was inaugurated, uh, whatever that year was, uh, 30, and Pharaoh said, you're going to be this, do you suppose that at some time in the next week or two it clicked? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm in this position. Do you suppose someday? I don't know. But I'm just asking the question. Because for Joseph, this is a real life. It's happening. You and I are just thinking about it. We don't have any clue. But somewhere along the line, and especially when those ten brothers walk in there, and he's prime minister, has been for nine years, And then they bow down to him. What did the dream say? He came to pass. But the dream said daddy was going to bow down to him. This is just the brothers. Interesting. Is dad still alive? Is all of my dream coming true? I don't know if he thought of that. I don't know. Bible doesn't say. That may not be important. But in terms of us understanding the trauma, the dysfunction, and yet going to God and having peace, what do you do? Here, here are ten men that took your life away from you when you were a teenager. In our day and age, you're not even of age yet. And they took his life away from him, took him out of his family. And he's standing there now, 39 years old. And as those 10 brothers come and bow down, he could have just said, hang them. And they'd have been home. Again, I don't know. Have you ever wondered what the, op what the chances were that they would walk into Joseph? Do you think Joseph sold all the wheat that was sold? No they, no, they had storage houses all over Egypt, didn't they? All over the areas where they grew it. They built the storage places in the areas because they would need to feed the same people. So my guess is, pure theory, is that there were people in charge of those, but any foreigner that came had to come to the capital because we're right next to the king's palace. The king's servants heard Joseph crying. They're at the palace. So the foreigners would have to then go to the king and say, can I? Will you sell me? The others, no. We're not in charge of that. We're only helping our people. That's how I envision it, okay? So they end up there. They have to. There's nowhere else to go. That's where they'd be directed. And who's in charge but somebody high in royalty to decide what foreigners are here and why are they here? I mean, think about it. You've thought about it. Many generations of Adventists have stockpiled food in case, you know, whatever. They're still doing it. What's the one thing you have to worry about? Someone Somebody shoot you and take the food. Interesting. Well, nations work the same way. A foreign country leader could have come in, spied the place out, destroyed the Egyptians, and had all their food. Well, they know that Egypt was... 
getting lots of funds and presents and gifts coming in, so it would be... Everybody kind of knew they had food, right? And so it was a natural thing to call them that. In just reading the story, you're like, spice, where would you come up with? Well, when you look at it from a political standpoint, that was the only thing they were concerned about. Are you going to take over our country? Spies coming in. So it was a natural thing for Joseph to say that. But now, because of shortness of time, okay, they're, they're held for three days. And then after three days, he takes them out of jail, he brings them back, and he says, now one of you is going to stay here for surety. Who stayed? Seven. Why not the eldest? <laughs> I think Joseph still remembered <laughs> that he had let him Because <laughs> Joseph knew. <laughs> Joseph knew. Even if he didn't know that Reuben intended to set him free, even if he didn't know that, he knows that Reuben wasn't there when it happened. <laughs> Joseph heard every word. He knew what their plotting was. He knew the conversation. He knew, he knew, he knew. Here's the scoundrel. And you will just sit in jail. I'm going to find out if you've changed. Why does Joseph care? I'm coming back to that question. Why does it matter? Why is it a big deal? He could have just said, okay, fine. Have your food and get out of here. Why did it matter? He loved them for a true change. He loved them. He wanted them to change. After all, God was his God now. Have they found that God? But there's another big, big reason. I think he wanted to know about his father and his brother and how they treated them because Benjamin actually was all by himself. Their mother died. He, he never got to really know his mother. Joseph was only six years old when his mother died. The others all had month, their mothers. But A big question in Joseph's mind could have been, have they killed Benjamin too? Right. But there's another reason. What ultimately happened to the family? Where did they go? To Egypt. Do you think Joseph would have invited a family of scoundrels into his country? He had to find out if they were genuine. He had to find out. And he did. He said, your spies. Yeah. If they were, if they were as mean as they were when they sold him into Egypt, right. there's no way he's bringing them into Egypt. That's right. That'd be disloyalty to the Pharaoh, to the king. He couldn't do that. He had to know. But, he yes. had to know. Because I think as soon as they showed up, if not before that, after all, there'd been nine years already, that he knew about the famine and, and all the rest. I think at the point they showed up, he had to think, how can I take care of my family? Am I going to have to just send food back there because they're scoundrels? Or can I bring them here and take care of them? Why didn't Joseph run away or something before he became so important? Just too far away, he knew he wouldn't make it? Or I wondered about that. You mean while he was in the king's court? Yeah. Why, why would you leave? No, in Potiphar. When he was a slave. Why? Oh, you mean in Potiphar's, when he was a slave to Potiphar? Because if they caught him, they'd kill him. Yeah. Number one, slaves don't run away. And chances are they would find him. Chances are they would. Egypt was the strongest country of the time. Yeah, but I think about Joseph. He was a very intelligent young man, very strong. If anyone could have probably made it, he probably would have made But what's, have what's, interesting, what's interesting is as you read the Bible and you see all these different stories, everybody knew about everybody. 
I mean, you hear this from, Can from Canaan, and they're down in Egypt. You're up in Canaan, and you know what's going on in Egypt. The communication, they didn't have internet, but boy, somehow they interneted. I wonder if one of their hatred for him about telling them his dreams, that maybe their father would give him the birthright. Remember they had such a thing in that time. Well, he was the firstborn it shows <laughs> of his first love. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, you know? it could have been that, I mean, that could have been in their mind sometime or another. Cause we'll the get rid of him because he's going to get the birthright and we'll have to. Because the birthright went to the first one to open the womb, mm -hmm. and he was. But not, and of his first love, which was, in his mind, his first wife, <laughs> if you please. He was the first of the one he really loved. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's many reasons. As you can see, you take this whole thing and put it in a jar and shake it. That's a family was it connecting. Very, very dysfunctional. But Joseph, um, going back to what Barbara mentioned, Joseph had dedicated himself to the Lord, and I'm sure the Lord was communicating with him in different ways. And so God would have wanted him to stay in Egypt. So I think that any thoughts of leaving or running away probably didn't enter his mind because he was going to stay where God wanted him to. Right. And, and, and add to that, too, Eva, the, the fact that he... He did so well. I don't think it took but a month for favoritisms to start to show that I like this young slave. This guy's good. And so probably from very early on, that may be why Potiphar bought him in the first place is because of his behavior up there on the stage or however they did it. These were God's chosen people. These were the leaders of God's chosen people. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we're not so bad after all. No, 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 don't go there. Oh, don't go there. <laughs> Let's go the other direction. Okay. If God can do that with them, God can do something with me. It's not about how good or bad I am. When you look at Joseph's development, compare yourself. Forgiveness. That's what we're talking about this week. In spite of dysfunction, in spite of, in spite of, in spite of all these things, Folks, when it boils right down, here's what it is. <clears throat> here's me. And each of you put, you're the me. It's not about all these other people and what they've done to me and the pain and the hurt and the misery, the anger that's in me relating to these. I can be that. Or, I can say, God, remove all of this and just make it this way. You're my God. My relationship is with you. I will be influenced. I will be grown. I will have stuff removed from me based on what you want. I will be what you want me to be. These may be bumps and bruises, but they don't internalize. That was Joseph. <clears throat> that was Joseph. And we can find many other Bible characters too. You and I need to do this. Amen. I told somebody this morning, and it reminds me, I'll tell it to you. An older gentleman walked up to a storefront coming down the sidewalk, and just as he got there, a beautiful woman came from the other direction. They arrived at the door at the same time. He just instinctively reached up and pulled the door open for her. She stopped and says, you don't have to open the door for me because I'm a woman. And he stood there and he says, ma'am, I didn't open the door for you because you're a woman. I opened the door for you because I'm a gentleman. Amen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying here. Be what God wants you to be. Don't do anything because of. 
Now, if God tells you to do something, you do it. Why? Because they want it? Because they need it? No, because God said to. Right. Did God need 12 tribes? Look what it took to get 12 tribes. It took two wives, two maids. We wouldn't have had 12 tribes of Israel. Well, did he, did he try and figure out how to get 12, or did he say 12 because he knew that's what it would be? <laughs> God knows everything from the beginning, doesn't he? He knows what you're going to do on year 7,941 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon come eternity. But he, he's, each of us are from one of those tribes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in the spiritual sense. Yeah. So which one is your spiritual father? <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, Linda. <laughs> I thought about what Barbara said of when, what about running away, you know, get back home. Where do you want to go home? Right. I thought, man, they're going to kill me. Well, yeah, I'm sure he thought about his father and his little brother. I know, but he had those big brothers. brothers. But he yeah. had to deal with the brothers. So. At least he knows, you know, I mean, where they're coming from now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just thought about that. Do you suppose Joseph thought about it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Of course he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long did he have to think about what he was going to do? Every day? You know, we sit here for a few minutes, think about these stories. We hear them and we think a few minutes and we come up with a few questions. He lived this day by day by day by day. He had time to think of a lot of questions. Honestly, you know, I have plans for you here. Yeah. And, and he told them God had plans that I think that he stayed so busy doing all these things that he needed to do and learning and expanding on it that he probably didn't waste time on thinking about it. Th I think eventually he it turned to that. Above he had a life with God. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter where it was. And that was number one and most important. Yes. Yeah. He had learned to obey God as he was growing up. Yeah. And just then his temptation, who was it he was concerned about? Disobeying God. Right. Yeah, he could have got some favors if he'd have done the other thing, but right. but he obeyed God first, and I think he had done that in all his other activities. Here's another thing. Don't anybody look at the clock, but that, that doesn't matter, right? Here's another thing. Abraham had how many? Four different women he had children by. How many did Joseph have? One. One, one, His major temptation that caused so much trouble in Egypt was over that very thing. And he was a young man. He was very handsome according to Spirit of Prophecy. Joseph did not even marry when he went into the house of Potiphar for some time. Who did he marry? What was her father? A priest. A priest. Now, was it a priest of God's? I mean, because no. Israel hadn't formed yet. No. But like Melchizedek, there were true believers and priests out there. So he did not marry, apparently, an Egyptian, most likely. He did not marry the king's daughter, which he could have, perhaps. No doubt he had some, because they had lots of kids. You look at Abraham and all of this that caused all of this to happen, and Joseph didn't violate it once. So two boys grow up in an al with an alcoholic father. One becomes an alcoholic, one won't touch it. And so some guy comes to him and says to the alcoholic, why are you the way you are? He says, look at my father, how could I but be? He goes to the other guy, why are you the way you are? He says, look at my father, how could I but be? It's your choice. What are you going to look at? What are you going to use all of your, here's why I'm here for. Joseph said, I'm picking the right side of this coin. I'm not repeating my father's mistake. And Laban was in on that. I'm not going to go there. He had learned his lessons young. He, had, he went through fiery trials in the sense of being a, a prisoner, a slave, and now when he's in power, it doesn't change. Joseph is Joseph is Joseph.
Do what you want to do. My relationship is here. And I'll treat you according to who I am, not according to who you are. Let's pray. Gracious God in heaven, thank you for being such a powerful God to make us whatever you want us to be. Help us to just get over ourselves and allow you to make us what you envision. We know we'll like that better. We love you and bless us the remainder of this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>